Hey, what is up guys? My name is Guillaume. Welcome back to Tomans Guitars and Basses and to today's video in which I'm going to try to assemble a David Gilmour Pink Floyd pedal board for under a thousand dollars euros. Now that's quite a bigger challenge than it seems because David Gilmour has fairly expensive and fairly extensive pedal boards. A lot of pedals, a lot of very vintage boutique, hard to come by stuff, whether we're talking about fuzzes, compressors, overdrives, uh, yeah, very, very fine things. So my goal today is to try and keep it as compact as possible. So just like uh, in the last episode, I'm gonna stick with the Harley Benton Spaceship 40 because it's been a very good platform. I think just the right size for if you wanted to travel uh, with a, just cabin luggage, for example, that fits in it, so that's good to know. And at the same time, not necessarily too limiting in terms of uh, real estate. I don't have any limit into uh, how many pedals I'm gonna pick today. I'm just gonna try and condense sort of the essentials of uh, David Gilmour's drives of choice, as well as some modulations, reverbs, and delays uh, to make a, a do-it-all sort of era non-specific board. So let's get started. And pedal number one is going to be our TC Electronic Force Field Compressor. Now that's gonna be one of the most affordable pedals on this board. It is a really good compressor, fairly simple to use, but at the same time, quite musical, like not super, <clears throat> compressing, but compressing still. It's a, it's a very nice pedal, it is true bypass, and it's gonna be really helpful when it comes to doing all the uh, like sort of searing compressor slamming into a limiter type, you know, desk sounds basically that have made some of Pink Floyd's uh, famous guitar solos like The Wall most notably. So TC Electronic Force Field uh, is gonna come first in our signal chain. And no Pink Floyd inspired pedal board would be complete without a good Big Muff, which is what it is. It's the Electro Harmonix Nano uh, Big Muff. Obviously, this is not all encompassing. Uh, David Gilmour is one of the most prominent Big Muff users, uh, but he used a number of them. Uh, some people will say, yeah, but the Big Muff Pie is the one that made the most sounds, and yeah, but the green. It's like, you know, it's all up to debate, I think. As long as you're in the Big Muff sort of territory in general, you're in a good place to start having David Gilmore-ish uh, type of sounds. This is a really good one. It's fairly inexpensive and compact, so I'm gonna use that for this board. Ah! And on the complete opposite of the compact spectrum, here is the Behringer Vintage Tube Monster, bearing its name very, uh, at heart, uh, there I say, this is obviously a sort of take on the tube driver circuit that is also a massive part of David Gilmour's sound. Those pedals are extremely hard to come by, extremely rare and expensive. And this is, as far as I'm aware, because I'm yet to plug this in, I'm really, really looking forward to doing that, a very faithful rendition of that pedal. So you got an actual tube inside of there, which explains the ginormous size of that pedal, uh, but we're gonna be compensating by using some more compact stuff on the side to accommodate for this one. So that's gonna be our third pedal for today. And in the spirit of keeping some real estate free from the tube monster, here is the Rodent by Harley Benton. This is one of the new Mini Stomp series pedal. Uh, it is a really, really nice uh, rat-inspired circuit. It does a little bit more than that with the solo and turbo mode, uh, but I think if you're going for David Gilmour uh, type of pedal board, a rat circuit uh, is definitely a must. So that is extremely compact, the uh, most affordable pedal on our board today, and it'll do a great job at getting sort of those grittier, high gain sound just on the verge of fuzz uh, territory. Here we go with modulations and the Wampler Terraform. Now, this is where I think most of our budget is gonna go through when we go into modulations and, uh, well, time-based effects, because as much as very affordable overdrives and distortion have come a really long way to sound most, like, especially with those vintage sort of recreations, vintage units, uh, modulations and really high-end modulations and delays and reverbs, a little bit harder to come by. So this was my sort of thought process behind this board, getting some really good stuff by maybe 
sparing some cash on the uh, drive side of things to focus on really high-end modulations. This one is awesome. Uh, it is obviously a multi-mode modulation that will give you a choice of uh, flanges, phases, vibes, trems, everything you can possibly desire to modulate all your prog rock melodies and uh, really uh, fine control over all of that. So one plot terraform and that's going to be our multi-mode modulation for today. And last but absolutely not least, the brand new Delverb by UAFX. Now this is one of the pedal releases that got me hyped the most. Uh, this pedal just came out and it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. It sits perfectly within the realm of the modern thing that does the vintage sounds the absolute best. And on top of that, it fits in our budget and, and it stays like more affordable than most of the other sort of delay reverb combos when you go into the high end stuff. So that's going to be our spring reverb, our plate, our whole reverb, uh, tape. Obviously, we want to tape echo if we go into David Gilmour territory, but also do the analog man uh, type of delay as well as a digital delay. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about this, and I'm really glad that we saved enough of the budget to go for like really high end pedals for modulation, reverbs, and delay because you want to have the best quality possible for all those washy sort of ambiences and everything. Uh, maybe not necessarily the most modulated thing. Now, keep in mind that at least for the very early and sort of most of the Pink Floyd uh, sounds, you're gonna have fairly traditional effects, like a lot of them creating guitar ambiences that are absolutely phenomenal and legendary. Uh, but rather go for something that's traditional and that does it very well. That's something that's overly modulated and that's gonna take your sound to places where it shouldn't necessarily go. Um, so I think that's a really, really good compromise and that's gonna be our last pedal for today. And just before we get to assembling, here's the pedal board assembly tip trick of the week. Uh, and that's gonna be concerning all your pedals that can also be uh, powered by 9 volt batteries. You can, obviously, now in the spirit of making a sort of gigging, touring pedal board and you don't necessarily care about the sound difference that the battery is going to make in comparison to a power supply, you're probably going to power everything with the power supply. If you do so and if you don't use batteries, what I recommend to do before assembling the board is to open up all the pedals while you do your cleaning anyways uh, and to make sure that if you are not using any uh, battery in there, you can uh, tape the contacts of the, the battery leads uh, shut. You can tape around them, tape it to the enclosure of the pedal in order for those not to short and not to create, like not to damage the circuit while rattling in there and come in contact with either the PCB or components or the enclosure itself, like that wouldn't do any good to your effect. So keep that in mind before assembling your pedal board uh, to uh, tape off the battery leads. <laughs> I think we're good. Uh, everything's got power. All the pedals are turning on and off. So that's good, very good. Um, now, obviously you wanna make sure that on top of receiving power, all your audio cables work. Ideally, you would have tested that beforehand, but the best way to do that is to plug that into an amp and get some sounds for you guys. See how close we can get to some very, very famous David Gilmore sounds. And for that, I have a surprise to myself <laughs> because Earlier today, I asked for our lovely studio manager, Ramesh, to go into the store and to find me a Strat that could do the 50s Strat, the black Strat thing, really. And he was like, do you not mind price and all color? And I said, of course I don't. So he brought me a guitar that I haven't seen yet. Are you ready? 
Are we ready? <laughs> oh no, he did not. <laughs> well, hey, you know, close enough. Like, that could have been the black strat. <laughs> Right, guys i hope uh, that was somewhat enjoyable for you obviously uh, this is just to give you a taste of the pedals that are on the board i wish i knew more pink floyd as much as i love it i'm definitely not a pro pink floyd cover guitar player but i think that was a good taste of what those pedals could do and what a, a just about a thousand uh, could give you in terms of you know versatility on a pedal board. That being said, there's another alternative that's pretty cool and I do want to mention because I have it here. Um, doing that with a guitar that expensive in my hands feels weird. But uh, if you don't want to bother with patch cables and uh, any sort of uh, um, powering problems and pairing issue, uh, Jam Pedals does an absolutely beautiful <laughs> uh, pink flow pedal, which is a multi-effect with all analog jam uh, pedals into a single enclosure. It is uh, just, it's made for that. And that goes about a thousand as well. So, you know, that's also an option. Uh, more difficult to, I'd say, modify if you want to swap pedals in and out, but it's an absolute beautiful piece of work and I just wanted to give it a shout out because that, that could be also someone among you guys being like, duh. Someone's done it. So yeah, someone has, and it looks absolutely beautiful. That being said, I hope uh, that, ha! 
I hope that video was enjoyable. I uh, hope you enjoyed the pedals. If so, please like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content that's coming next. Let me know in the comment section, what would you like to see? Uh, do you want some more budget builds? Do you want some more artist inspired on a budget on the 1,500, whatever, whatever you want. Please do let me know in the comment section. I'll catch you down there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.